Hello guys, it's Dr. Kofi here again and welcome to another episode on the Tutor Med channel. And on this channel, everything medicine is simplified. So I want to begin this video by thanking you guys again for your massive support. It's only been two months and I can feel the overwhelming support already. I really appreciate that. Alright, in this video, I want to discuss the urinary report of a patient I saw at the clinic one whom I had a strong suspicion that he may have a UTI. Of course, the patient has given his consent for his clinical data and lab report to be shared and used for educational purposes. If you are a returning viewer or a new viewer and you haven't subscribed yet, kindly support us by doing that now and hit the notification bell for updates on our new videos. Thank you and let's get started. And so how will the urinary of a patient with a UTI be like? Like we always emphasize, begin with the history and physical exam before proceeding to interpret any clinical investigation. And so in the history, we look for symptoms of simple cystitis, symptomatic bladder infection, such as dysuria, which is pain during urination, increased urinary frequency, said that the patient urinates a number of times than he usually does, then urgency, and this is the inability of the patient to keep urine on himself when he first feels the need to go and void, and he feels that if he doesn't rush to the washroom, he will swell himself up. Then nocturia, which is increased number of times a patient has to get up and urinate at night. Then we have unusually foul smelling urine we all know that urine contains urea and sometimes ammonia and so it has a foul smell however if a patient has an unusually foul smelling urine it may indicate uti this reminds me of a patient with bph who had retention and had stayed at home for a very long time and had developed sepsis because he had developed uti so we tried passing the catheter and then we were unsuccessful. So we had to drain the urine transabdominally, a procedure called suprapubic cystostomy. And when we had done that, the urine that came out was very pungent. And so an unusually foul smelling urine may indicate UTI. And then sometimes hematuria. Again, look for symptoms that suggest that the infection may have spread beyond the confines of the bladder. And this is known as complicated UTI. So symptoms like fever, chills and rigors, unilateral flank or back pain, you look for them. And then these symptoms typically point to acute pyelonephritis. Now you heard me mention complicated UTI. Any symptomatic UTI, I mean UTI with symptoms, which is confined to the bladder, is an uncomplicated UTI. So like we mentioned, the dysuria, the frequency and urgency. Once it goes beyond the bladder, it becomes complicated, meaning an acute pyelonephritis is an example of a complicated UTI. Initially, once a man develops UTI, it was, compl- it was considered sorry, as a complicated UTI, but now that is not the case. Again, in the history, you look for risk factors for UTI, including poorly controlled diabetes mellitus. And this is particularly significant for women. In men, there is insufficient data to suggest that um, poorly controlled diabetes can give you UTI. Then, especially among the young females or young female patients, frequent sexual intercourse, and then another risk factor, especially in men, is underlying urinary tract abnormally or anomaly. Sorry. So if the patient has, um, I mean, anatomical anomaly. So if the patient has a urethral structure, a BPH, an obstructive pathology, it may predispose him to getting a UTI. Now, on physical examination, most patients may not display any signs or exhibit any signs, unless, of course, the patient has an acute pyelonephritis. That way, the patient may be febrile, patient may be toxic-looking, and then on abdominal examination, 
you may pick up renal angle tenderness or costal vertebral angle tenderness. Apart from that, there is nothing really to pick up on examination. So let's look at what to expect on the urine RE report. And so for macroscopy, remember you are looking for color, you are looking for the odor, and you are looking for turbidity. But like we said, most labs do not report on the odor. So we focus on the turbidity. The color may not be clinically relevant. So for the turbidity, remember that in infection, the urine may look turbid. Some labs may report this as hazy. Then we move to the urine dipstick or chemical analysis. We expect that the leukocyte esterase will be positive and the nitrites will be positive if the patient's UTI is caused by enteric bacteria like E. coli. Then on microscopy, we expect to see a significant number of white blood cells per high power field known as pyuria. And then we expect to see or there may be red blood cells because of hematuria. And then also microscopy might pick up bacteria like gram-negative rods including E. coli, etc. Now let's look at the clinical case. And so I had a 63-year-old man with hypertension who had suffered a stroke about three years ago and is on medications. So he came to the clinic for his usual reviews and during one of them, he complained of increased frequency of urination and urgency for the past two weeks and this had affected his quality of life. On direct questioning, to find out if he had any obstructive pathology, he only had feeling of incomplete bladder emptying and this made me suspect that he may have a bladder outlet obstruction, commonly BPH. But apart from this, he did not have dysuria, he did not have nocturia, there was no voiding symptoms like hesitancy, poor urinary stream, etc. And so based on this, I did a DRE, found out that he had a, a large prostate, and so I requested a PSA and then a urine RE. But we will focus on the urine RE in this video. Now, this was the report of his urine analysis. We will interpret this soon, but let's look at what we've been discussing practically. We have a practical urine RE report, so let's go through them briefly. Notice that the report is divided into three components like we said. We have macroscopy, which is defined by this blue circle. And then chemistry or dipstick analysis, defined by this yellow circle. And then microscopy, which is showed or shown by this pink circle. Now let's look at the macroscopy. We said it was about three things, the color, the odor, and turbidity. Now instead of turbidity, some labs may report this as clarity or sometimes appearance. And then notice that like we said, odor is not routinely reported. And so we have clarity and color. Then we turn to the chemistry. Do you see the parameters of the mnemonic we generated? Give him a slap bank. So we see G glucose, which is the first parameter. We see H, which is hemoglobin. This lab reported hemoglobin, but it's blood as well. Then we have S, we can see specific gravity in there. Then we have L, leukocyte esterase in there. Then we have A, which is albumin, but here it is reported as protein. And remember that the protein reported here is actually albumin because the standard dipstick is only sensitive or relatively sensitive to albumin. Then we have P, pH. Do you see pH? Yes. Then we have B, bilirubin. Do you see bilirubin? Yes. Then we have U, urobilinogen is in there. That is after the nitrites. Then we have N, nitrites. You see it there. And then we have K, ketones is there, which is after the glucose. Then we move to the microscopy. And so for microscopy, we said to look at three C's and then one M. Do you see leukocytes? It's also a C, a cell. Do you see erythrocytes? Yes. 
and then you see cats. We will look at the rest of the report in the next slide. Now this is the continuation of his report. So it is still on the microscopy. Do you see squamous epithelium? Yes, it's also part of the three C's, the cells. Now you come to bacteria. It's also a microorganism. Yeast or hyphae is also there. Then crystals, which is a third C, is also there. So we just wanted to look at the urine RE that we've been discussing practically. The next slide will look at how to pick up the indicators for a UTI. Now, what are the pointers to a urinary tract infection on this report? So we begin with macroscopy. And here, it is a clarity which gives us the first clue. The lab said the urine is cloudy. And remember that we said a cloudy urine could be from an infection or contamination with a genital tract secretion. The urine is supposed to be clear as far as clarity is concerned. And so, the contamination with genital tract infection can be minimized, like we said, when we clean the patient's external urethral meatus properly, and then we obtain a midstream urine or a clean catch urine. Then we move to the chemistry or the dipstick. Where do we go to? The leukocyte esterase. Leukocyte esterase here is three pluses, and the presence of this enzyme indicates that there are polymorphonuclear white blood cells in them, otherwise called neutrophils, and this indicates an infection. And remember that you need at least 5 WBCs per high power field for the dipstick to pick up even a plus, so 3 pluses is very significant. However, remember that again, Contamination with genital tract secretions can also give you a positive leukocyte esterase. It is just that the three pluses is very significant. Then still on the urine dipstick, we move to nitrites. Nitrite here is positive. So a combination of a positive nitrite, significant leukocyte esterase, and a cloudy urine is strongly suggestive of a UTI. The fact that there is nitrite in the blood gives us an indication or an idea of which organisms are probably causing the UTI. So they are probably the enteric bacteria like the E. coli because they have the nitrate reductase which can convert urinary nitrates to nitrites. Then the next place we'll go to is microscopy. And so remember that we said the leukocyte esterase may be because of a contamination or there's actually presence of white blood cells. So the microscopy we did showed that there is a significant number of white blood cells and then they are probably responsible for the leukocyte esterase we saw on the urine dipstick. Now we're still on the urine microscopy, where do we move to microorganisms? And here we see the bacteria are three pluses, which means that the presence of bacteria gives the white blood cells, which give the positive leukocyte esterase and then a positive nitrites and also the cloudy urine. Now, the fact that the squamous epithelium is not observed means that the urine was not contaminated. Remember that we said squamous epithelium is commonly present when there is contamination. Now you would realize that the albumin was positive on the previous slide and we said that protein positive or albumin positive usually indicates glomerular injury. However, it is important to note that we have transient causes of albuminuria including fever or strenuous exercise and so you can have a positive, just a plus of albumin in urine. However, some literature also documents that UTI sometimes can produce albuminuria, but not so typical. Not so typical. Remember that we said UTI proteins are typically not albumin. Okay.